You're ridiculous. You know that, Bricks? You're ridiculous. Morning, everyone. So we're back from the 4th of July. Um, we had a great weekend um, hanging out with friends and family. Um, there may have been some beers drank, but that happens. Um, but I had a big glass order come in last week, just before the 4th. So now I got a bottle of syrup because I've been out of a bunch of sizes. So that's today's project. So just like when we're making syrup in the season, um, we reheat it up to 180, 190, and then we filter it again. So I gotta get the filter press ready. Now all presses have a way that they're supposed to go together. Um, the way that the syrup flows through the plates, it comes in through the hollow plates, and there's a hole in them down at the bottom where the unfiltered syrup comes. Allows it to go into the hollow plate, goes through, then it comes into the waffle plates. And the hole for those is down here in the opposite corners. But if you have them flipped, then they don't work right. They lock up and don't, they don't move syrup. So you gotta have them the right way. And there's a way on this leader press, if you look, it's, uh, where'd it go? Up here, way up here, very, very convenient. The straight wing, in the hook wing. Because on here, there's a straight wing on the right and a hook on the left. But it's not easy. So what I did, again, you take um, advice from other sugar makers, is we put a line on it. So on top, there's a Sharpie line that goes all the way over so that from the top, I can look and if there's one um, dot of Sharpie that's out, then I know my press set up wrong. This way, I haven't had trouble because when a press is locked up, it's nothing but a mess. Still working on batch number one. Um, it ends up I have to do two batches out of this because the finisher won't completely fit in here. That's going to change this year. It's just a matter of that getting done. But the second batch is over here heating up. I leave the barrel right above the finisher. Hangs from the winch. That way um, the barrel heats up a little bit. So we get a residual, little bit of residual heat comes off of it. And heats that syrup up in the barrel. But 
Keep bottling this so we can get this done. So after we bottle everything, you get the hot syrup in the bottles. The way that I do it is I take, and everything goes back in the cases upside down. And the reason for that is that way the hot syrup gets on the cap so it sterilizes that spot too. But then I want to put a batch coat on. So I bought a price gun and I just use a batch code that we come up with that works for us. And the batch code goes on the bottom. That way people don't even really notice it's there, but it allows it to be on a flat spot of the bottle. It doesn't take long. Batch coating's easy. I normally run around afterwards and I just push them down just to make sure. Generally with the hot syrup though, it's not a big deal. Now I'll take, and you gotta put gloves on because the syrup still hot in it, but I pull them out and I flip the bottles over, but I make sure that our logo faces the front of the box. And what that does is it allows it to be sitting the same way on every bottle, then I can put the grade labels on top. Grade labels are on top. Today is dark syrup that we're bottling. Now new this year is I'm putting heat shrink tamper bands on it. Um, these bottles don't completely have a uh, tamper evident. You can definitely tell because they're hot packed and you'll hear the air release or the vacuum release on it, I should say, when you open it, but it does, it's not the best way. So now we've got heat shrink tamper bands. Those go on next and then we just put a heat gun to them. So those are all on, they're not too bad to put on. They take a second, but they just kind of stick up. And then the heat gun you don't need on a crazy high setting. Just go around it. And they shrink right on. And that's it now. Now we just take the box, close it up, put it on the shelf for when we're ready. That's all we do for bottle and syrup. So for some of our glass, we do hang tags and on them, on one side they have our logo, and the other side we put the grade label. That way everything's there that we need to. So when I do them, I lay them out by how many are in a box. That way it's just easier. And I always put the hole for the tag up in the top right corner. That way it's hanging right when I go to put it on the bottle. So I put all the grade label stickers on. These are for the 100 milliliter leaves. They've already got the batch coat on them. So now it's just a matter of taking it. The hang tag, the elastic goes through the hang tag. And on, and then you just loop it over it. Make sure it looks right, and that's it. And then it goes back in the case right side up. everyone so it's day two of bottle and syrup yesterday i had to work last night and then i but before that i had to pick the kids up and then i had a zoom meeting that i had to do so i didn't quite get finished i've got one more batch to finish bottling um it's already heating up so 
we'll get that done. We'll get the air compressor hooked up and then see if we can get this finished. And then later I've got to go get some firewood. So it's going to be another long day. So today where I've only got 15 gallons of syrup to bottle up, I've got to filter that much too. So I don't need to get my whole press dirty because it's not going to take a lot. It's only going to take five scoops of DE. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my block off plate. I'm just going to run two frames today. That way I don't have to get the whole thing dirty. The block off plate is just a piece of stainless shaped like a plate. It slides down in. So you just put it down in between one of the waffle plates. That way syrup can get in both sides. So as you can see, it's just one, two, three, four, five um, papers, and then the block off plate. So I get two hollows, and then the filters. So that just saves on papers and cleaning later. So syrup's bottled, I got that all done, finished up, clean in, everything's put away for the most part, just got a couple things to do later. But now I'm going to get firewood. I'm gonna make a stop to drop off some tents because Aaron's work borrowed them. But I gotta bring the tractor too, so that I can load this firewood. So I'll load that up. I got a nice load of wood on now. I just gotta fill up the airbags on the truck because we got some weight on. And well, the springs are a little tired. So we'll just fill up the airbags. That's got maybe 75, 80 pounds in them. I just used a little jerry can of air to top it off so I don't have to lug an air compressor. I just carry it in the truck. Away we go. Load number two. Pick this one up. It should tuck right in here out of the way and when I get back with the tractor later, then I'll show you.
shove it out of the way and stack it up so I can split it next week. I think that's like probably right around a quart and a half, two quarts. Now I gotta greet that other load where I dropped my tractor off and then go pick the kids up. So I got this wood all pushed up. There's probably three cord here, but this stuff that I got that was the, been down for a while, I'm a little nervous about that. One of them broke just pushing on it and it, it looks pretty punky inside. So I may have lugged home a whole bunch of junk and just end up for the bonfire. We'll find out, see you in the next one.